What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here and we're almost there. iOS 9 is being released on September 16th and with this video I wanted to see if Apple made true on their promises. Did iOS 9 improve the performance on older devices? Is it more stable? Is it overall a firmware that you would want to run on an older device? So in this video I'm going to be putting that to the test. I'm going to be comparing the current iOS 8.4.1 firmware to the iOS 9 GM which is by the way the pretty much finished product of iOS 9 on the iPhone 4s and iPhone 5. These are naturally the slowest devices that will be running iOS 9, so the changes should be the most apparent on these devices. Now, not only did Apple promise us better battery life, up to four hours of more battery life with the low power mode, Apple actually said that they improved the performance on older devices as well, so supposedly they'll be running iOS 9 better. Well, my initial test proved that that wasn't so true. However, with this test, I'm going to be testing the finished version of iOS 9 on the older devices, and I'm very curious to see how they stack up. And I'll be showing you how to speed up iOS 9, especially on older devices after my test. All right, so here we have all freshly restored CDMA iPhones. So iPhone 5 over here on the left, 8.4.1, and on the right, iOS 9 GM. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up and show you guys that I am indeed running these firmwares. So we've got the 8.4.1 devices on the left. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start these guys up. I know it's not a really big deal if your phone starts up faster or not, but it's just a good indicator of which device has a better optimized software. All right, so with a flick of the switch, all of these guys are going to immediately power on. So three, two, one. Now iOS 9 actually has a lot of new features built in like low power mode, uh, new proactivity search, uh, of course it's not going to be available on these guys but overall iOS 9 has a lot and as my hidden features videos have shown us there's a lot that iOS 9 introduces which would in turn possibly make it start up slower. Well let's go ahead and see how these guys stack up on that front. And looks like 8.4.1 was a little bit faster on both of them. Hmm, not a very good sign. So even more apparent on the 4S. I mean, it's still not loaded. I could already be doing other things over here. So, all right, not a very good sign for iOS 9 so far. Looks like 8.4.1 beat it there. But let's go ahead and launch some applications and see the fluidity. All right, so just gonna make sure everything is closed out of all of these guys. Let's go ahead and launch the App Store. Usually one of the most intensive applications to open and load. Wow, there's definitely a delay on iOS 9 looks to have loaded a lot faster on 8.4.1. So on a device like a 4S, of course, these changes are going to be more noticeable. They're not going to be uh, as apparent on newer devices. That's why I wanted to choose the older ones. Anyways, let's jump into the iTunes store. So even just launching them, can you see that? How much of a delay there is on iOS 9? That's ridiculous. Uh, let's go ahead and see which one loads here first. Again, 8.4.1. Come on. Please don't tell me. That's how it's gonna be. All right, let's try the five. So App Store. And uh, just a moment faster on iOS 9. Okay, that's a good sign. Let's try Maps. 8.4.1 loaded, a couple seconds faster. iTunes. So there's a, a delay on iOS 9. I, it's very apparent to me. And there we go, loaded a few seconds faster. So even getting into the multitasking pane, it's a little bit quicker on 8.4.1. So I'm really not seeing that speed performance boost that Apple's been touting. So let's try uh, weather. Wow, loaded a little bit faster. Try maps on this guy. Can you see that, guys? I mean, why is there a delay? I'm really confused. I mean, iOS 9's big thing was optimization of performance on older devices, yet I'm not seeing that. I really am not seeing that. It doesn't feel fast. Look at that. It's just ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's load one more. Uh, let's go into Safari. Look at that. Open at the same time. And same over here. Seems like there's just a delay where there shouldn't be for no apparent reason when opening things on the iPhone 5. Anyways, let's go ahead and get some real numbers from a Geekbench and see how these stack up. All right, so once again, just gonna clear everything out. I gotta give it to iOS 9, clearing apps out of the switcher is a lot swifter on iOS 9. I mean, it's you don't have to wait for the animation for them to slide over, I like that. But all right, let's go ahead and jump into Geekbench and give these guys a spin. 
see how they stack up. Now I will do this test again on newer devices once the actual iOS 9 drops in roughly a few days from now. So I'm gonna do that with the 6 and 5S as well. But so far from what I'm seeing, the older devices don't really gain anything. In fact, they suffer with iOS 9. Just overall using it, it's not as fluid. There's lag everywhere. I've never seen that before. So kind of ridiculous. Hopefully 9.1 possibly addresses that, but it seems not to be a step forward, but definitely backwards. And there it is, wow. So just about the same score, Geekbench on my iPhone 5. All right, and there is 8.4.1 and iOS 9. So multi-core score is just a little bit behind on iOS 9. Overall, looks like 8.4.1 stacks up better on uh, the Geekbench for 4S. So last test, I wanna do a Wi-Fi performance test. So see if that in any way improved. And of course, I'll be running these individually to get a good feel of the Wi-Fi speed. So the test has completed, and on the iPhone 4S, there was a slight downgrade in performance of the Wi-Fi. However, on iOS 9, with the iPhone 5, the iPhone 5 and iOS 9 did a lot better. It almost doubled the score of iOS 8.4.1. So that Wi-Fi issue is finally resolved in iOS 9 on the 5. I mean, for me anyways. So pretty much from all of this, what I'm seeing is that you should hold off updating to iOS 9 the moment it drops if you're running an older device, such as the 4S or 5. Now remember, Remember iOS 7, 7.1.2 was like the perfect firmware for the iPhone 4S. It was stable, it was fast, yet iOS 8 came out and it ruined everybody's experience with the 4S. Eventually it got better and now it's great on 8.4.1. It's fast and it's stable. So same thing is gonna happen with iOS 9. I wouldn't recommend updating right away until Apple resolves some issues and speeds it up over time. 9.1 will probably be a better choice for updating than iOS 9. So as we can see here, iOS 9 slows down your older device and it's painfully evident using these tests. So if you're already on iOS 9 or you're planning on updating regardless of what I've shown you, let me go ahead and show you a few tips and tricks to go ahead and make your experience faster and better. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you these from most effective to least effective. So first one is to do a clean install of iOS 9. If you're coming from iOS 8 to iOS 9, there's gonna be a lot of leftover files and caches and I would totally recommend that you back your device up, restore with iOS 9 and then restore your backup. Even better, just save your pictures and contacts and add those without restoring to a backup. But it is definitely recommended to do a fresh install of iOS 9. It will significantly improve the performance. Two is to go into settings and jump in to general go into spotlight search and turn off Siri suggestions and go ahead and turn all of this off. I mean, I never use this. For me personally, spotlight search isn't important and it does make a huge impact on performance, especially when opening up apps and using your home screen. So for me, this isn't important. I'm gonna uncheck everything, but if you guys want to keep a few around, whichever ones you use more, and then go into background app refresh. Now, I don't use this at all. It really doesn't matter to me. Whenever I need something, I'm gonna go into that app and refresh it manually. So this significantly not only improves your battery, but also performance of your device. Next, go into accessibility, jump into reduce motion and turn this on. So this is pretty much gonna remove that parallax effect from your home screen. So it'll no longer shift with you when you rotate it. And that takes up a lot of battery life and actually performance as well. Also go into increase contrast and look at this now. And when you turn this on, it'll actually make it not so much transparent. This also improves fluidity and better animations. And last one is to jump in to the main settings over here, go into the app store and in here, disable automatic updates. This won't be updating applications in the background or searching for updates. It'll save you just a little bit of speed. So overall, using these methods, you should notice a significant performance boost. So things will run a little bit better. It'll be smoother, especially on the older devices. But guys, with this video, I just wanted to show you guys that iOS 9 is not quite where Apple promised it would be just yet. I'm not saying they're not getting there. It's just gonna take a few softer updates and eventually, it it will be on par and even better than I would say, but it's just not there just yet. You know, give it a little bit of patience, but with battery life, I gotta give them props. iOS 9 does very good with battery life, especially with this low power mode. So uh, I was very happy to learn about this, but you know, hold off just a little bit. It will get better and I'll keep you guys updated on everything. Have a great day guys. Peace.